Hello friends. As you know, clothes are influenced by body sweat and sometimes fade, and sweat sometimes stains light-colored clothes. The purpose of this test is to determine the color change of printed and dyed textile products when they are exposed to the body sweat and the stain on the adjacent fabric as well. The perspirometer is the first of the devices that will be used in this test. The device is used for acidic and alkaline samples. The samples are subjected to testing in these devices. Besides this, we need a stove that can be adjusted to 37 degrees centigrade. The samples are placed between the acrylic resin plates in the device. Some multi-fiber adjacent fabric or single fiber adjacent fabric can be used as adjacent fabric. Today, we will use some multi-fiber adjacent fabric. In addition, the acidic and alkaline sweat solutions must be prepared. The pH value of acidic and alkaline sweat solutions must be adjusted to 5.5 and 8 respectively. The acidic sweat solution is composed of sodium chloride, histidine and sodium dehydrogen phosphate. On the other hand, the alkaline sweat solution is composed of sodium chloride, histidine and disodium hydrogen phosphate. Calibrations on pH values of acidic and alkaline solutions are made by sodium hydroxide. In the process of the sample preparation, one acidic and one alkaline sample are prepared. We can use a template to prepare samples or we can cut the fabric in sizes of 10 cm by 4 cm with a ruler. In the same way, we prepare an adjacent fabric with the same size. Our adjacent fabric is in roll form. We later make them the same size by cutting 4 cm along the width. If there is a possibility to confuse the front and reverse sides of the sample, we can mark the reverse side of the sample to avoid confusion. We are sewing along the short side in a way that the adjacent fabric and the sample face each other. I'm trying to sew it in a way that they are not very tight because I want to unstitch it easily at the end of the test. In this way, I have prepared the sample. I follow the same procedure for my alkaline sample. After preparing the acidic and alkaline test solutions, the sample is exposed to these solutions. If the sample is made of fiber or yarn, as much fiber or yarn as half of adjacent fabric's weight is used. The sample is prepared by sewing the adjacent fabric to one side of the sample and the undyable polypropylene fabric to the other side. Then, I have prepared the sample by sewing it along all four sides.
Samples are weighed before the test and their original weight is recorded. The purpose of this is to make sure that the samples absorb as much solution as 2 or 2.5 times of their weight. We write down the value. We prepare one acidic and one alkaline sample. We multiply the values we have found by 50, and so we find the amount of solution that we will add. That is, 50 times of the value are taken and that amount of sweat solution is added for this sample. After our test samples have been prepared, we prepare acidic and alkaline solutions. For this, I first begin with the acidic solution. First, we weigh 5 grams of sodium chloride. We should make sure that the chemicals that we use have analytical purity. In the weighing process, we go on by reducing the added amount as we get close to the value of 5 grams. I never put back into the box the excess of the amount taken from the box. The cloth need not be so sensitive. 5.022 grams are quite an ideal value but it is important that it is not under 5 grams. Then I put the amount that I weighed into the beaker. Then I weigh histidine, which is a kind of amino acid in the second step. The solution we prepared is made of human sweat, and human sweat consists of proteins and amino acids coming from food that we have. So we use amino acids in the sweat solution. We weigh 0.5 grams of histidine. I don't put back the excess amount into the box. Then I put it into the beaker. I shake the rest with distilled water at the bottom of the beaker to avoid substance loss. Then I weigh 2.2 grams of sodium dehydrogen, which is our acidic composition. Again, I eliminate the excessive amount. I add acidic composition that I have weighed into the mixture. I shake it with distilled water clockwise.
In this way, the acidic sweat solution is prepared. Then I add a little pure water. The more pure water I add, the easier the decomposition will be. Therefore, I shake it fast. I smash big particles so that they dissolve more easily. Because, as you know, when the particles get smaller, the decomposition rate rises. In this way, the compounds are fully decomposed. I have prepared the acidic sweat solution. The next step is to transfer this to a balloon. While we transfer the solution into the balloon, the use of a rod in this way will keep the solution flowing directly into the balloon, not to anywhere else. I put some amount of pure water into the beaker. I shake the beaker and then I pour the water into the balloon. After having shaken the solution, I can pour it into the balloon without using a rod. we complete the solution in the balloon to one liter. Because I must adjust the solution's pH value to 5.5, I will do this adjustment with sodium hydroxide and therefore I leave a little space in it. Then I shake the solution. In this way, the acidic solution is prepared. Now, I weigh 5 grams of sodium chloride to prepare the alkaline sweat solution. Then I put it into the beaker. I weigh 0 0.5 grams of histidine. I shake to clean the dust in the glass. Then I weigh 2.5 grams of disodium hydrogen phosphate. We add the solution into this.
we add distilled water again. The alkaline sweat solution dissolves harder than the acidic one. Because the particle dimension of the alkaline solution is bigger, we mix the composition hard again and smash the big particles to provide an easier decomposition. So now we have prepared the alkaline sweat solution by shaking it hard and there is no unsolved substance in it. Then we transfer it into the balloon as we did for the acidic solution. We pour it with a rod. We shake the beaker's bottom with some distilled water. We complete the solution up to one liter again. The alkaline solution's pH value must be 8, so I leave a little space in it. I close the plug and shake it well enough to mix. In this way, I have prepared the acidic and alkaline sweat solutions. Then, the samples are exposed to this solution. We will set the pH values of the acidic and alkaline samples. Firstly, we set the acidic solution's pH value to 5.5. I'll use the 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution to adjust the pH. I clean the tip of my pH meter's electrode. I dip it into the solution and after observing the pH value, I take some sodium hydroxide solution with a pipette and a pua. After adding it, I shake it immediately and measure the pH value again. If I add a little more, it's going to be enough, since I have observed a value very close to the desired pH value. I add a few drops and then, shaking again, I dip the electrode into the same solution without washing it. I'm waiting for the pH value to be fixed at 5.5 on the screen. As soon as I see that it is fixed, I remove the electrode. Then I complete the solution to 1,000 milliliters. Here, the line on the balloon's rim helps me. The lower surface of the liquid is adjusted according to the line, since it is a colorless liquid. I'm shaking it for the last time and the preparation process of the acidic solution has been completed. Now I will set the alkaline solution's pH value to 8. 
I clean the tip of my pH meter's electrode and dip it into the solution to see the pH value. After observing the pH value, I continue the process with sodium hydroxide. I'm shaking it. When I see that the pH value is adjusted, I remove the electrode. I complete the solution up to 1000 milliliters. In the same way, the line on the balloon guides me. I shake it again. And in this way, the alkaline solution has been prepared. Now, the next step is to subject the test samples to the acidic and alkaline sweat solutions. For this, I use plates with a flat surface. One is used for acidic and the other one is used for alkaline samples. Since I weighed the acidic and alkaline samples when they were dry, I multiply the weighing results by 50 and I add as much solution to them. Since we calculated this value before, we can now directly add it. Now we are adding our alkaline solution. I press on the samples with a glass rod so that the solution may penetrate into the samples well enough. Then I keep them waiting in the sweat solution for half an hour. While waiting, I stir it up like this now and again. After the waiting time is over, I remove the samples from the solution. I pour the excessive amount of solution by means of a glass rod. I weighed the samples when they were dry. Now I weigh them as being wet. I make sure that they have absorbed as much solution as 2 to 2.5 times of their original weight. After observing that they are at the desired value, I can place my sample into the device. We can Place both of them together after doing the same for the alkaline sample.
I place the test samples into the perspirometer device. Firstly, I open the upper part. I place the sample between two acrylic plates. I can place 10 samples to be tested at once, so I can use more acrylic plates. This is an optional situation, and I place my sample with 10 acrylic plates. I center the acrylic plates in the middle of the surface. I make the edges flat, and then I put this piece over it. After that, I place the top bracket and put the weight that creates a pressure of 12.5 kPa. I squeeze the screws. In this way, I filter the excess solution and my acidic solution has been placed into the device. After doing the same for the alkaline sample, I put my samples into the oven that was preheated to 37 degrees centigrade and wait for four hours. The acidic and alkaline samples are placed vertically into the previously adjusted oven to 37 degrees in temperature. Then we wait for four hours. The sample is removed from the oven after four hours. After taking the sample out of the device, I set the oven to a temperature that will not exceed 60 degrees centigrade. I put the sample into the oven and hang it alongside its short edge. After the sample is dried, the test is finalized to determine the staining and the discoloration. The second step of evaluation is the level of fading in color. For this step, the original sample is placed on the left side and the tested sample is placed on the right side and the difference is analyzed by using a mask. The difference between them is determined with the color fading scale. The values on the scale are 1 to 5. Here, 1 is the worst, whereas 5 is the best value. The test result is obtained by comparing the difference between the sample and the original with the scale. <laughs>